Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Saturday morning prayer in the fourth week of Lent. Let us center our hearts and invite the Holy Spirit. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. It is you, O God, who judges, putting down one and lifting up another. We give you thanks, O God, we give you thanks, calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. I will appoint a time, says God. I will judge with equity. Though the earth and all its inhabitants are quaking, I will make its pillars fast. I will say to the boasters, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not toss your horns. Do not toss your horns so high, nor speak with a proud neck, for judgment is neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. It is God who judges. He puts down one and lifts up another. For in the Lord's hand there is a cup full of spiced and foaming wine, which he pours out. And all the wicked of the earth shall drink and drain the dregs. But I will rejoice forever. I will sing praises to God of Jacob. He shall break off all the horns of the wicked but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is you, O God, who judges, putting down one and lifting up another. I will create a new heart in you and breathe into you a new spirit. I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and purify you from false gods and uncleanness. A new heart I will give you, and I will place a new spirit within you. I will take the stone heart from your chest and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you to help you walk my laws and cherish my commandments and do them. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, amen. I will create a new heart in you and breathe into you a new spirit. Rise up in judgment, O God, and save all the oppressed of the earth. In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. 
At Salem is his tabernacle, and his dwelling is in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of battle. How glorious you are! More splendid than the everlasting mountains, the strong of heart have been despoiled. They sink into sleep. None of the warriors can lift a hand at your rebuke, O God of Jacob. Both horse and rider lie stunned. What terror you inspire. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounced judgment. The earth was afraid and was still when God rose up to judgment and to save all the oppressed of the earth. Truly, wrathful Edom will give you thanks and the remnant of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord, your living God, and keep it. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Rise up in judgment, O God, and save all the oppressed of the earth. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. My heart is crushed within me, all my bones shake. I have become like a drunkard, like one overcome by wine, because of the Lord and because of his holy words, for the land is full of adulterers. Because of the curse, the land mourns, and the pastures of the wilderness are dried up. Their course has been evil, and their might is not right. Both prophet and priest are ungodly. Even in my house, I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Therefore, their ways shall be to them like slippery paths in the darkness into which they shall be driven and fall. For I will bring disaster upon them in the year of their punishment, says the Lord. In the prophets of Samaria, I saw a disgusting thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. But in the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen a more shocking thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns from wickedness. All of them have become like Sodom to me and its inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, I am going to make them eat wormwood and give them poisoned water to drink. For from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout the land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You must work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, inspiring both the will and the deed. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth. With all their vast array, all things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners. 
that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent. And in me, you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory of ages to ages. Amen. You must work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, inspiring both the will and the deed. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. It is not as though the word of God had failed. For not all Israelites truly belong to Israel, and not all of Abraham's children are his true descendants. But it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as descendants. For this is what the promise said, about this time I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. Nor is that all. Something similar happened to Rebekah when she had conceived children by one husband, our ancestor Isaac. Even before they had been born or had done anything good or bad, so that God's purpose of election might continue, not by works, but by his call. She was told, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. What then are we to say? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on those whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on those whom I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So then he has mercy on whomever he chooses, and he hardens the heart of whomever he chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No one has even spoken like this man. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. 
from all the hands who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Treatise Against Heresies by St. Irenaeus, Bishop and also known as St. Irenaeus. Oh, my pronunciation goes south sometimes. O oh Lord, the word of God first drew human beings to God as servants, but later he freed those who made subject to him. He himself testified to this. I do not call you servants any longer, for a servant does not know what the master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, since I have made known to you everything that I have learned from my Father. Friendship with God brings the gift of immortality to those who accept it. In the beginning, God created Adam, not because he needed human beings, not because he wanted to have someone on whom to bestow his blessings, not only before Adam, but also before all creation. The word was glorifying the Father in whom he dwelt and was himself being glorified by the Father. The word himself said, Father, glorify me with that glory, that I had with you before the world was. Nor did the Lord need our service. He commanded us to follow him, but his was the gift of salvation. To follow the Savior is to share in salvation. To follow the light is to enjoy the light. Those who are in the light do not illuminate the light but are themselves illuminated and enlightened by the light. They add nothing to the light. Rather, they are beneficiaries, for they are enlightened by the light. The same, if true, of service to God. It adds nothing to God, nor does God need our service. Rather, he gives life and immortality and eternal glory to those who follow and serve him. He confers a benefit on his servants in return for their service and on his followers in return for their loyalty, but he receives no benefit from them. He is rich, perfect, and in need of nothing. The reason why God requires service from us is this. Because he is good and merciful, he desires to confer benefits on those who persevere in his service. In proportion to God's need of nothing is our need for communion with God. This is the glory of humanity, to persevere and remain in the service of God. For this reason, the Lord told his disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you. He meant that his disciples did not glory him by following him, but in following the Son of God, they were glorified by him. 
as he said, I wish that where I am, they also may be, that they may see my glory. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Mercifully hear our prayers, O Lord. Spare all those who confess their sins to you, that those whose consciences are accused by sin may by your merciful pardon be absolved through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who after the creation of the world rested from all your works and sanctified a day of rest for all your creatures, grant that we, putting away all earthly anxieties, may be duly prepared for the service of your sanctuary and that our rest here upon earth may be a preparation for the eternal rest promised to your people in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, our God, through the Blessed Virgin Mary, you have shown us the example of a disciple who is faithful to the words of life. Open our hearts to receive your saving word so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, it may speak to us in our daily lives and bring forth a rich harvest of holiness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings, and you may place them in the chat, even though this is pre-recorded. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings of Lent. We thank you for the weather that is turning nicer. 
We pray for all of those who are cold this day, for those who are without fear, for anyone who suffers in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for all those suffering with coronavirus. We pray for those who have died for coronavirus. And we pray for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, which I think I already said. Gracious God, we thank you. We praise you. We pray especially for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We pray for all of those who have birthdays and anniversaries this week. We pray for those who are in assisted living and struggling with that environment. We are your people, a people of community. And now let us join together in the act of reception of spiritual Holy Communion. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and we ask that you enter spiritually into the hearts of those who are not able to receive you sacramentally and who desire to unite themselves with you and embrace you with all their love. Let none in your church ever be separated from you, and let us live and die in your love. May your body and blood preserve our body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, pour thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, announced by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary, so by his cross and passion, we may be brought unto the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you for joining me for this pre-recorded Saturday morning prayer. Um, this will be March 20 by the time you read this, uh, pray this rather. And um, I just wish you a blessed day. Um, fear not, and um, what a holy, holy season. Um, I look forward to seeing you all in person, and um, may God's blessings be upon us. Take care. Goodbye.